Now on Up Close, instead of the great one, he's been referred to as the next one. Flyers center Eric Lindros discusses taking over the responsibility of being the sports poster boy. But first, his response to being called the meanest player in the league. His thoughts on the physical series so far with the Rangers. And does he think the Flyers are in position to win the Stanley Cup this year? Eric Lindros is up close, up next. From the ESPN studios in Los Angeles, here's Chris Myers. Hi, how you doing? Welcome to the show and thanks for joining us. The quest for the Stanley Cup continuing Friday night in New York when the Flyers go up against the Rangers. Again, Philly leading two games to one and joining us from the team's practice facility in New Jersey, just across the river from Philly. We welcome Eric Lindros. How are you, Eric? Good, thanks. How are you? Good. Things going well. Now, in Game 3, you score your first career hat-trick in the, in the playoffs. Where does this rank among your career accomplishments so far? Well, it was, first of all, I just... Going back to the game, it was much more important to, to get the win than it was to, uh, you know, to score three goals. Um, um, and we want to keep going deep into the playoffs, and uh, anytime you can contribute and score some goals, it uh, you know, pushes the team there. But is, isn't that the most fun when you get to get the score of the goal? I wouldn't say it, uh, it's, it's, gonna, it's certainly going to be maybe a highlight later on in my, in my life, but uh, right now we're focused on, uh, on just getting by this round. And the third goal was the empty netter, 38 seconds left in the game, and you, you blew past Mark Messier, your idol, which we'll talk about the score of that goal. And he later said a team of horses wouldn't have, have stopped you. What, do you. what do you think you meant by that? Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, uh, you know, it was, actually it was a meaningless goal. We're up two, two goals, and... Uh, um, you know, the play happened and, uh, you know, enough said. How would you assess the series so far? How would you categorize? It's gone back and forth. Um, it's been, there's been a lot of sloppy hockey at times. We've, uh, we come out uh, at certain times during the game, like we did in game three, and played a really good first period. Second period, we got a little sloppy. In, third, in the third period, um, um, we had, uh, we had more, uh, more give-ups. We're, we're giving the puck up all the time. We're making some, uh, some poor decisions at the lines. It's been one of those series where it's gone back and forth. I think in game two, they went up a couple of goals. They gave up, us the opportunity to come back and, and to tie it up. And they went ahead with a few more, and we you know, were in the mix again. But uh, it's been kind of a back and forth uh, bit of series with a lot of mistakes. Terry Murray, the uh, coach of the Flyers, said that you did a lot of talking on the bench uh, during the, that last game that, uh, where you go up 2-1, to one, helping to calm down the team after blowing the two different leads. What, what exactly are you saying there? Well, I think it's a group of guys. I, anytime that there's a, a bench gets fired up, it's not just one guy or, or, or a couple of guys uh, sparking it. It's, it's everybody coming together. And we've been in that situation before. We've, uh, where we've had uh, you know, some leads, and, and uh, you know, we've, we've played at uh, times uh, maybe uh, a little risky and, and, uh, and made some mistakes, and they've came, come back and, and, and tied up the game. Uh, just to settle things down, there's lots of hockey left. There's 15 minutes to go in the game, and you know, we can still do it. Yeah, and we, we throw around that term being a leader of the team often, but have you become a little bit more vocal uh, to, to help this team at this stage? At times. Um, you know, there's a time to talk and there's a time just to, to go out in the ice and, and to do things. Um, certainly when you're talking a, a whole lot, uh, you, you might fall on deaf ears at, time and, at times. And uh, um, it's something that, you know, since I was, uh, I was given a, the captaincy here, um, you know, you, you learn to you learn to deal with you. You try and get better at it, and certainly there's nobody nobody better in the league or, uh, than Mark Messier at uh, at his job at captain. And that's uh, someone who you have idolized, which we will uh, address in getting a chance to play against him. And you've always been known for your physical style of play. This week, Rangers coach Colin Campbell called you maybe the meanest player in, in the league. Uh, <laughs> what was your reaction to that statement? Well, a lot of it has to do with playing the media, trying to maybe get into some of the referees' ears um, prior to a game. Um, I didn't look too deeply into it. I know it. Uh, you know, people can say what they want. But, um, you know, it's a battle out there at times when uh, things aren't getting called. Uh, you know, it's, it turns into a bit of a war. But uh, um, that's just uh, that's just someone trying to get into uh, to uh, you know some people's heads. Were you offended by it at all? Yeah, in a way, because I I don't uh, I don't perceive myself that way. I, you know, if if, if things are Things are coming at me in a, in a certain sense, and I'm going to go back at them in the same sense. Um, you know, as fair as fair, but uh, uh, it's it's give and take. 
Now, you were suspended for the first time in your career near the end of the regular season after a game against the Rangers. You high stick to Shane Shirley, you're breaking his nose, then uh, Ulf Samuelson at the end of the game high stick. Do you feel the Rangers carrying a grudge with this, still bitter about this? I don't think you can carry a grudge into a playoff series like that. Uh, there's a time and a place for, for situations. Uh, uh, during the regular season, uh, you know, I was it was unfortunate that 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 those incidents happened, but um, you know, the playoffs are not a time to be getting back at that people. I'm sure there'll be a, a time and a place when uh, I won't see uh, I won't see Shane Shirley coming out of the corner of my eye, and I'll be uh, <laughs> laying on my back at center ice some sometime. But uh, we'll we'll wait for that to happen. So it's part of the game, but do, uh, do you ever cross the line in 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 the physical part of the game? You, uh, at times, yeah, sure I do. At times I do. Um, yeah, it's, it's the old saying, you, you do what you can. Um, and uh, certainly if you're penalized, you won't be going back that road. Do you feel that sometimes, because you're, you are a physical player, also one of the superstars in the sport, you get, you get baited a little bit? In other words, uh, opponents try to provoke you to get into the penalty box. Well, I think it's the same. If you look at what happens with, uh, with Brendan Shanahan, I've been watching a lot of the playoffs this year with, and with his team. Uh, in Detroit and uh, you know they're, they're trying to do the same thing to Brendan um, uh, I guess it, it comes with our style of game you're gonna get into uh, you know some of the physical uh, uh, games within games uh, there's, there's gonna be a lot of that um, you know and that's gonna be the result of it you know it's just it's just people you know wanting to win and, and doing what they can to win yeah you downplayed the, the scoring the goals before is is the physical part for you the, the most fun part of playing hockey no it uh, there was a time when I was a lot younger that I thought I was invincible and I could I could run around and, and not be injured. Uh, um, certainly, if a check's there, then it's, uh, there's an appropriate time to, to throw a check. And, and sure, I, I don't shy away from that. But at the same time, my game's you know changed completely since uh, since my second year. I I don't uh, run around like I used to. Yeah, and Terry Terry Murray said that you've matured as a player, sometimes taking a punch for the team by by not retaliating when you're hit by your opponents. Was that tough to to learn? Well, it's it's, it's easy to do when when right away the referee you know calls the calls the penalty and and, and you have the uh, the satisfaction of of going on the power play. Um, you know, it's uh, it's easy to do that. Certainly, the referee is not going to see everything, but. Uh, you know, if they see uh, see a, a large percentage of it, then it, uh, you feel like you've accomplished something. All right, before the break here, there has been speculation, or there was, that, that Murray needed to take this team to the finals to earn a new contract. Have you heard that? Uh, would, you, would you like to see him sign the long term with the Flyers? I don't know what, uh, what's going on. I, um, there's a lot of people with, with contracts uh, uh, in this organization that you know, they have to be looked at. Um, but Bobby Clark will take care of certain things uh, when Bobby Clark wants to. Um, we uh, our job right now is as as a group to uh, to get to to win this third series. Um, we've got a lot of hockey ahead of us here. We know we we're up against a real strong team, and uh, and to look uh, look ahead after that, if we uh, you know after accomplishing uh, something in the third round, if we're uh, fortunate enough to do so. We're talking with uh, Eric Lindros. He's in uh, New Jersey. We're here in Los Angeles, and uh, you know where you are. Later, Eric will tell us about his contract, which has one year remaining, how long he'll stay in Philly, and going up against his idol, Mark Messier, in the playoffs. We'll have more with Eric in a moment. Don't go away. Up Close is brought to you by Original Cool. We're back with Eric Lindros of the Flyers. He won the National Hockey League's MVP award in 1995. You're in your fifth uh, season in the NHL. Wayne Gretzky, who you're skating against, uh, along with Messi and the Rangers, won his first of many Stanley Cups in his fifth season. So the comparison's beginning already here. What indication yeah. <laughs> do you have, Eric, that this might be your time now? Well, this is the this is the the deepest hockey club that we've had in Philly since I've been here. Uh, you know, after the trade. Uh, you know, coming here from Quebec, um, we had a bit of a depleted team at times, uh, with injuries and, and, and other things. Uh, you know, we traded away a, you know a lot of a lot of great players, um, but now we've we've Bobby Clark's done a tremendous job in, in making you know real smart trades, going out, spending the money, uh, getting getting free agents like like Joel Otto, uh, um, doing really well in the draft. Uh, you know, drafting guys like Dinah Subris, uh, Yanni Ninema. Um, it's all kind of starting to come together, and you can really see it in the, in the depth of our bench. How about for you? Where have you uh, improved your game the most? Well, I think I, I kind of touched on it before with that other question uh, uh, in terms of the physical play. You know, maybe letting the game come to you a little bit more, not uh, knowing that you're not invincible, knowing that you know you you can get hurt, and uh, and I've 
you know, my first couple of years, I was hurt a lot, and, and it's not something that I want to go through again. But, um, but you have to play uh, with confidence and aggressively, right? I yeah, mean, I mean, you can't shy away from it, and you can't play with this, you know, this burr in the back of your mind that, uh, you know, you're always checking behind your back. Um, but, uh, you know, certainly maybe let the game come to you a little bit more. Um, uh, at times, uh, not carry the puck at 100 miles an hour, try and, try and slow things down, try and, you know, see the ice. I think in watching clips of, of uh, especially Mario Lemieux, he, his ability to, to slow the game down, to let things happen at the speed that he wants things to occur at, uh, and to make the, make the great plays that, that he does, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's fun to watch. And, and you know, maybe I'm, I'm getting to a small percentage of what uh, he, you know, he's been accomplishing. <laughs> yeah, the, tor the torch has been handed in, in your direction. Uh, the, well, you keep talking about this torch. I'm yet to see this torch. And actually, <laughs> I, I think that... Uh, you know, for a league to do well, it takes more than one or two people to, to carry a torch. I, I, I look around the league, I look at guys like Peter Forsberg, I look at Joe Sackick, I, I look at uh, um, Yarmer Yager, Brennan Shanahan, Paul Correa. You know, there's so much talent out there. It's, I'd like to see everybody, you know, grab a, grab a piece of, of something and, and let this league really take off. Well, and, and things fall into place. Obviously, you have to have the, the talent to start with, but then if you're in the right city with the right kind of team and you're a successful team, there's mm -hmm. even more attention thrust upon you, as, as, as in your case. And this, the third straight year in the playoffs for, for you and the team, but yet to reach the finals. So yeah. uh, with all of that, can you describe, you, you know, your desire uh, for the cup? I mean, how that's grown, how it's become a little bit more realistic for you. Well, it's 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 you can dream on and dream about it all you want, uh, um, but you have to prepare for it. There's a lot of there's a lot of preparation that goes into it to each playoff series. Um, there'd be nothing better than to uh, uh, than to live some of the uh, you know the fairy tale stories that you heard about the the 1970s here. Um, John Vukovic is a neighbor of mine down the street and, you know, before the third series, you know, stopped by and said, you know, I got to ride down Broad Street uh, <laughs> with the Phillies and, uh, and uh, it was something special. So, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, we, we can get a chance at it. Yeah, and going back to 92, the Flyers traded six players, two draft picks, 15 million to uh, Quebec Nordiques at the time. They've since become the Colorado Avalanche. And, and, and so that added a little more pressure considering what they gave up to acquire you in Philadelphia. How, how has that added a little bit to the, uh, to the pressure to deliver a championship for that city? Well, it it's certainly adds to it, uh, uh, you know, quite a bit, uh, especially with, with Colorado having the success that they've had. Um, you know, they're a real strong hockey club. They're, uh, they've got a, a great goaltender in Patrick Waugh. Um, you know, Peter Forsberg's played terrific for them. And, and that was, you know, the big cornerstone of that trade was, was, was them acquiring Peter Forsberg, um, and, you know, and, and doing some smart things with their draft picks. But, uh, um, yeah, you have that, uh, you have that, that itch to, to do it for, for the city that uh, uh, gave up, you know, so much to get you. And, and uh, have, you know, have stuck behind us. Uh, uh, in times, you know, my first couple of years when we weren't such a strong hockey club, we still had a lot of support from our fans. It wasn't like uh, there were seven or eight thousand people in the stands some nights. It was always, it was always very full. Uh, most of the time, sellouts at the old Spectrum, and and you know, you you sit back and you think about it all, and, and you think about the the support that you get in the city, and it's it's a great place to play. All right, and speaking of that, your contract, one year remaining, your, your father, Carl, uh, acting as your current agent, which is a good deal. I hope he gives you, you give a good percentage. Uh, <laughs> do, do you expect to, uh, to finalize a contract that'll keep you in Philadelphia? You know, well, the business is for business people, and I'm, I'm just focused on the hockey part. I'm sure, uh, I, you know, I don't want to move from Philadelphia at all. I, I love it here. I've, I've got a house here, uh, which has turned into a home. Uh, I enjoy the area. I enjoy the people, and I really enjoy the team. Um, you know, I'm sure they'll they'll work something out. All right, so you're not worried about it, but it, your salary not among the, the top ten in the league right now. Uh, any scenario, uh, Eric, that, that might not have you remaining with the Flyers beyond next season? I can't think of one right now. No, it's uh, I, I, it's not. I don't. I don't even look at it right now. I don't even. Uh, I don't want to go there. I I, <laughs> I, I want to stay here in Philadelphia. I, I love it here. Um, you know, the team is 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 really really come around and uh, I'm just we're just starting to catch the, the right uh, the right waves could have that uh, that dynasty thing working all right we'll continue well, with uh, Eric <laughs> Lindros yeah, we'll leave him hanging on that we, we gotta win it we first can, we gotta <laughs> win one first win one first all right later we'll talk to him about messing with Mark Messier we're up close with Eric Lindros we'll have more in a moment don't go away <laughs> Music. 
We're back up close here in Los Angeles, and thanks for staying with us. We're talking with Eric Lindros of the Flyers. His younger brother, Brett, played with the Islanders for a couple of years before being forced to retire because of multiple concussions. And, uh, Eric, I want to know from you, you play a very physical game, as we discussed. How hard was it for you to, uh, to see your, your brother's career come to an end this way? Well, it came quickly, too. Um, you know, to, to see somebody work so hard. He decided when he was 14 that he was going to play in this league and uh, made tremendous strides, uh, went from being the last player chosen to, to be part of a hockey team to, to being the uh, you know, a first rounder in the National Hockey League, uh, to work so hard and then all of a sudden um, have the cards fall the wrong way. It, uh, you know, it, re it's, it hurts him. It was really hurting him in the fall when training camp opened up. Uh, um, and there's certain times during the year where he, uh, you know it strains him. Yeah, how did you help him through it? Well, I don't know so much how anybody can help somebody like that through it. You, uh, you know, you don't talk about hockey all the time. You, you, you uh, see what's going on in their lives and, and, uh, um, you know, he'll come in, in Florida, it was, it was funny because we're in Florida and, and all of a sudden he'll just show up in a city. And, and we had won a game in overtime in Florida and, and uh, he came into the room and he's just, he's built like a, uh, he's like a tank and right. he uh, walked right into the scrum of reporters and what a goal, just kind of shifted them all away a little bit and, and people were kind of stunned and, and there, you know, someone looking just like me, um, you know, showed up in Florida to, to support us and to watch the game. He, he kind of floats in and out. Uh, um, he did that job with uh, uh, the NHLPA be a player program and, and did real well at that. And he enjoys the, the broadcasting uh, side of things uh, and analyzing hockey. And I, I think he's going to uh, follow that uh, follow that path. How, how has he uh, how has he helped you? Uh, maybe particularly this season during this time of year. Well, he's always there for support. There's there's times when things uh, obviously don't fall uh, the cards don't fall exactly the way that you want them. Um, he's always there for support. Uh, um, you know, just the, the phone call to, to say, you know, get your head back up, pick up your chin. You can, uh, you can do this. Keep it going. You're, you're doing well. Um, you know, that every every little bit of that really, uh, really helps you at this time of the year. This is a, this is a really, this is a fun time, but this it's a, uh, it's a good grind. Yeah, and, and something that keeps you hopping. Now, you you never got the chance to go to college because you were playing yeah. hockey and then building your your career. But during the lockout in '94, you did get a chance to get to get a taste of the college yeah. life back home in Ontario. I know you're yeah. big, you're a big millionaire now, but uh, but what was that like uh, going back to going it back to great. school? It was great. It was great. Actually, I went to school during junior, uh, but I never really got to stay on campus and, and enjoy the campus uh, experience or, or kind of be part of uh, a group of people. I was always commuting back and forth from, from Oshawa into, uh, into Toronto. Um, but I stayed in the house with, uh, with nine other guys. Uh, it was on Cheapside Street. Figure that out. <laughs> All and, right. uh, and you slept we, on the floor? I slept on the floor. I had a blast. It was great. It was... Uh, I, uh, I, I had an, just an unbelievable time. It was a, it was a tremendous experience. Um, it, it, was, it was a side of life that I hadn't seen and, and wasn't uh, permitted to see because of uh, you know, some of the things that were, were happening and, and going so successfully in another side of my life. But uh, it, I really, uh, I've got some great memories of it. Yeah, you wouldn't trade, obviously, your, your hockey life for uh, maybe a full, a full run at four years at college, would you? No, I can't say I would right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, yes, we're not on this day. Why do some of your teammates call you Grandpa, by the way? Oh, you guys are digging all this stuff up. I don't, uh, there's a couple situations where uh, things get a little sticky around here, maybe, and uh, I think talking, I, think, I don't know, I think I was talking to a reporter and talking trying to make sure that I was expressing myself correctly and not uh, not finding uh, my way into uh, into hot water with a certain subject and they were uh, they were laughing at me and and, uh, and uh, they ended up calling me grandpa because I took so much time to uh, to express myself oh, over okay. a certain issue it wasn't a big thing okay so you're yeah, so for you're a wise young man is what they're saying I woke up well, I, don't, I don't know about that we'll but. exaggerate it a little bit we'll be back with Eric uh, he'll talk about the flyers rotating goaltenders and how he compares to the player who is his idol. All right, we're up close with Eric Lindros of the Flyers. We'll have more in a moment. We have a couple of minutes left with Eric Lindros of the Flyers. You had the hat trick in game three, and the Flyers took the edge on the Rangers. Uh, you're up two games to one now, Eric, and have used two different goaltenders with Garth Snow and, and Ron Hextall. Do you think the, uh, the goalie shuffle has, has helped uh, the team, or should Terry Murray just go with one guy and stay with him? Pick the guy who's hot. Um, you know, Snowy carried us uh, 
uh, early on here, played a, played a lot of games, played extremely well. Ron came in the last game against uh, Buffalo, had a solid, uh, had a solid game there. Uh, we start with Snowy, plays real well in game one in this series. Um, game two, we had some problems, and, and, and Hexy, uh, Hexy starts game three, and, and I thought he played, uh, played well there. So, you know, it, uh, they're very similar in style. They're very similar personalities. They're very fired up individuals. They're competitive. Um, their ability to handle the puck uh, is, is, is similar. Their leg strength, their ability to, to come across the crease uh, with a lot of speed and and, uh, and be real sharp and, and quick. Uh, uh, it really doesn't matter to us who's in net. We know we're going to get the, a great goaltender. And obviously, so far, the Flyers have the edge. Now, for you, an interesting series because growing up, Marc Messier was your idol. You've talked about that uh, before. Uh, how is it playing big games uh, against him in a series like this? It's sink or swim. It's... Uh, <laughs> It's, uh, it's, it's this team or, or their team. And, uh, um, I mean, he, he can't be greedy. I mean, what does he have, six already? Uh, uh, we uh, we want to uh, win this series, obviously. And, and, and he, uh, he does, uh, you know, for, for his fans and his team. Um, uh, it's a good battle. It's, uh, it's fun. We're not, I'm not seeing him on the ice a whole lot. Yeah. Uh, you see more of Wayne Gretzky? More of Adam Graves than anything really? else. Yeah. Um, and and uh, Adam's playing uh, playing real well defensively, and, and he's been that whole line's been tough to uh, to get going on. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll I mean it's it's a good go. Uh, Messier Gretzky uh, near the end of their careers. Mario Lemieux ha has played and retired. Uh, we talked about at the top the torch being being passed on, but whether you want the responsibility or not, Eric, people are pushing you into that as the premier player it's, in the league. Uh, what it's not. Think? It's not that I you don't want the responsibility. It's just I think that things can happen. Uh, can can the, the league can better improve itself if it's spread out. That's that's the what my point was prior. All right. Well, good. And then there's part of part of your responsibility is uh, continuing on with the Flyers. We've run out of time. Thanks for joining us. All right. Come see us when you come out west to uh, visit your Sounds brother. Sounds good. Okay? All right. All right. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks we a lot. Have a appreciate Eric Lindros being with us here on Up Close. You can catch Game 4 of the Eastern Conference Finals Friday on ESPN. We'll see you tomorrow with Tom Glavin. Thanks for watching. Take care. Our uh, next guest is one of the most talented.